We are back here on Call of the Wild the Angler and today we're going to be doing a beginner guide to get you started absolutely right. And the very first thing you want to do is create your character. Today's guide will be a very thorough guide. We're going to go through absolutely everything you need to know to get started in this amazing game and we're going to head straight into it. So if you want to change your sex, that's with the body type. So I would not like to be a dude. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of having a beard. That is a good step. <laughs> so once you have picked out your character and you are good to go you can do a rotation see what it looks like you can actually turn it around so when you're done there just press escape and here we are in the game. So this is the map and it's gonna start you out at this small lake really close to the starter outpost, which is right over here. So it says here, welcome to Golden Ridge Reserve. To ease you in, you'll be presented with some short explanations and instructions. So we will go through that. Once you finish the tutorial, you will be connected to online multiplayer automatically. And that is something I wanted to mention to you guys. You do have to do the tutorial in order to get onto multiplayer and play with your friends. And just by going by this, Outlook Tower. It unlocks it, but you do need to go all the way up to the top and simply by unlocking the map and doing nothing else, that will actually level you up and give you XP. And basically at the beginning of the game, you want to level up as fast as you possibly can because that's going to enable you to get better gear and catch better fish. But definitely the game is a lot harder right from the beginning, kind of like the Hunter Call of the Wild. And the more you level up in the game, the easier it is going to get for you. Okay, so now we're up here. We're just going to survey and that unlocks the lookout tower. And this game is absolutely stunning. It is beautiful. Wait till you see the Norway map. It's even more beautiful than Golden Ridge Reserve, but EW makes good stuff. Okay, so that is unlocked and it tells you right on the screen there. WASD is what you're going to use on keyboard. This game is now out on console, so you can use it with a controller, which is awesome. And it is cross play. So we can all come together and play regardless of what platform that we are on. So just by coming down here, this is going to unlock the main outpost. There are four of them and this is the main one. Now it is probably better to get around and unlock your map using a vehicle and to get a car you just come right up to this sign right here, auto rentals, hold down E, select your car. Now that you've called for a car, move to the left door and press E to enter the driver's side. I don't love the driving in this game but it is way faster than running. So you drive the car the same way you run, same keys. And here is a map of all of the trailheads and lookout towns Hours. Take a photo of that guys and that will definitely help you to know where to go to unlock your map But when you start driving, this is what it looks like. Yeah, it's not the best kind of makes me a little queasy But you definitely at the beginning want to unlock your map as fast as you possibly can So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to do the tutorial So it says move to the jetty and if you're not sure what a jetty is a jetty is just a dock And it will always tell you where to go This is where you want to go to do the mission if you activate a mission it will give you this yellow diamond. If you don't go there to do it, it will not complete the mission for you. So let's go back there. And as soon as that yellow diamond disappears, that means you are in the right area and you can start trying to complete that mission. So there you go. It has disappeared. So it tells you right on the screen, press number one to equip your rod. So this is a bobber. I am on PC. So when you scroll your mouse wheel, that's going to allow you to select the distance that you want your bait to hang. And then to cast out your rod, you hold down on the left mouse button pull back your mouse, push forward, that will cast out for you, then press F, that is the focus button, and just wait for something to bite. So this is where patience will definitely do you well in this game, you do need to be patient to play this game. Okay, so the first part of the tutorial is just to cast the rod. You don't actually have to catch a fish here. It can be confusing. So don't wait for a fish here. Just simply reel in and that will complete this first part of the tutorial. And then you can catch a fish. Done, beautiful. So then we cast out again. Gonna press the F button for focus. Then we're gonna wait for a fish. So it says right there, wait for a fish to approach, nibble, and then bite. When the indicator says strike, press the right mouse button. Now you don't wanna wait too long or it will be too late. Okay, so now you're gonna reel in. Now the bottom circle here, you don't want that to get too red or your line could break. We'll talk about that more in just a sec. So we have a juvenile here, mountain whitefish with one point. That's about the tiniest fish you can get, but we did catch a fish and that is what we wanted for the mission. So we're gonna release the fish and now it says here XP and credits. Catching fish will earn you XP and credits. Credits allow you to buy new equipment and apparel from the shop, earn enough XP and you will level up, unlocking additional equipment in the shop. And that is what we wanna do. So that completed that mission. So now it says we wanna go over and greet the shopkeeper and follow the path 
path to the shop. And that is the shop right over there. So you can put a waypoint, just left click, set a waypoint. To put your rod away, just press number one. And you can press G and auto run in this game, which is very sweet. And I believe on a controller, you double click on one of the joysticks and that will enable you to auto run and auto run is just so awesome. Okay, so right here, this is the shop. So we're gonna go up here, hold E. Now I have my volume off. So she will be talking to you, but she talks a lot. So it says we now have to equip the minnow bait using the quick menu. So you're gonna press Q. Just click on the bait here and click on minnows. And that completed that part of the tutorial. And now they want us to go to the jetty and catch another fish. So you wanna go where the yellow diamond is. If you don't go to the exact spot where they want you to go for the mission, it will not complete the mission. Okay, so we're gonna press one to pull out our rod. I'm gonna adjust this to be at about 1.6 we'll try and we're gonna cast out. Press F for focus and just wait for that catch. But the missions are really great. You definitely want to be doing as many missions as you can right in the beginning because it's going to teach you the game and give you experience. And there is a lot to learn at the beginning. Okay, we've got a bite. Start reeling it in. So you want to look in the bottom right hand corner and you're okay in the gray. Right down here in the bottom left where it says 30%, that is your drag. And then... Caught him too fast. We'll talk about that in a second. We got a black crappie here, a bronze, and that's gonna give us 116 points, and we are going to release it. So when you start out, you will have three slots for three different rods, but as you level up in the game, you can have as much as six different openings for rods. So if you want to clear a rod, just click one of the different rod types and the rod will vanish. So there it is gone. So I'm just gonna redo it the way it was. I just wanna show you how to equip it in here. So we're gonna do a float fishing setup. So now I'm gonna click on my rod. Now I could have other rods, but they could be in storage, in which case I'd go move them into my backpack and then I can equip them. Click my rod. I want the reel that matches the rod. So you'll see here that this rod has a max strength of 22.05 pounds and so does the line. So that's the right line. We have our float. I'm gonna use a size five hook and then we are gonna use minnows. That is actually the setup I was using when I. I did get my diamond largemouth bass and my diamond catfish. So this is actually a really great setup, but that is how to equip your rod. So when you're done, you just press escape and it is time to fish. All right, so now it says here, baits, lures, and hooks. Well done, swapping your bait lure is a good strategy to use if you are not getting any bites or want to try catching different species. Changing hooks will affect the size of the fish that bite. Small fish will not bite bigger hooks. Now, this is a great opportunity for me to direct you to the angler discord. You definitely want to join the angler discord I will leave the link in the description below, but there is a wealth of information here that you definitely want to get your hands on. So here we are, Call the Wild the Angler. You want to go to Resource Hub, and right now we are fishing in Golden Ridge Reserve. So let's click on the help sheet and visit the site. It's going to pull up this right here, and under Community Links, there is so much information in here. It is absolutely crazy. Golden Ridge Reserve fish, click on there. There are all the species, and there are 20. 21 fish species on this map alone. So if I click on largemouth bass, open that file, it's going to give me all the very best spots to fish for largemouth bass, their habitats, all their bait and lure preferences. This does come right out of the game, but it is here for you again. This is what is not in the game and this is what's gonna help a lot, especially if you are fishing for a diamond largemouth. Now it also has the hook sizes and there is a hook chart in here, but basically how this works, let me show you the hook guide. So so if you click here on hook chart, this is the hook chart for Golden Ridge Reserve. Now it'd be a great idea just to take a photo of this, keep it on your phone or wherever you can access it nice and easily. So if we go down here to largemouth bass and I will show you how to read this chart. So for hooks size three, two and one, when you are fishing for a largemouth bass and you are using hook size three, two or one, you can only catch a diamond with those hooks. You can catch other fish, but nothing smaller in a largemouth mouth bass will bite when you're using those hooks. When you use a size four hook, you can catch gold and above. When you use a size five hook, silver and above. Size six gives you bronze and above. Actually size six, seven and eight and nine and 10. These are for juveniles. Basically with hooks, how they work is large fish can bite on small hooks. Small fish cannot bite on large hooks. So
So you definitely don't need to just be using a diamond sized hook in order to catch a diamond. That just means if you use that hook, nothing else will bite except for a diamond. So you could be casting out quite a lot because nothing else is going to be biting. But if you do get a bite, you know it is going to be a diamond. So I would prefer to use something smaller. I would probably use a six because I do want to make cash and I want to continue leveling up. And by the way, there is no level cap in this game. Not like in the Hunter Call of the Wild where level 60 is the max. You can just keep leveling up forever and ever, which is kind of cool. So that is how you read the chart. And there is a chart here in Discord, both for Golden Ridge Reserve and for troll sports in Norway as well. There is also a bait chart and how you read this sweet chart. Let's go back to largemouth bass. So where there is an X, you can use that particular lure or bait, but this triangle means that it is their absolute favorite. So if you are targeting that species, the popper is the number one lure that you wanna use when fishing for a largemouth bass. So that will definitely help you select your lures and bait. And it even has the legendary and all of their favorites down at the bottom. So here is the full chart for both reserves. Take a quick photo of that. And there is the lure and bait guide for both maps as well. Now, how the hooks work is basically a size 10 hook is the smallest hook. As you level up, hooks will start to unlock for you and they will get bigger and bigger. Now you can catch big fish on a small hook, but you cannot catch small fish on a big hook. So basically it goes from 10 all the way to one and then we have 1-aught, 2-aught, 3-aught, and 4-aught, and the 4-aught is the biggest hook in the entire game. So that's the smallest, and that is the biggest. So now we're gonna talk about dragon tension. So go to the jetty. So now we have to go to a different one. So let's follow the yellow diamond. Okay, managing dragon line tension is important when catching bigger fish. Too much tension and the line could snap. Too little drag and the fish will start swimming away. Tension is viewed by the circle in the bottom right corner of the screen. So you can vary your drag using the X and Z buttons. I'm not sure what it is on a controller. Okay, so let's cast out again. So basically, once your tension gets, oh, got a, got a bite there, gets into the red. Ooh, I want to release my drag there because my hole, the entire bar there was red and now we're okay. But as you're reeling in, you wanna be lifting and putting down your rod. That's gonna tire your fish out. You wanna be doing that continually as you are reeling in. And if it is going into the red, you want to decrease your drag. But that is definitely something you can play with when you have a fighting fish. Geez, this guy's going away. So I definitely wanna be increasing my drag now. Pink is okay, but the red, no. <laughs> Gotta be careful. What do we have on here? Going into the red a little bit is okay, but you don't wanna be there for very long. So that was just a bronze smallmouth bass, but we have the starter gear, so everything is a challenge right now until we do level up our gear. Okay, drag intention, well done. A higher drag increases the stopping power of your reel, preventing fish from taking line. This also increases the line tension, which is a double-edged sword. A higher tension will tire the fish faster, but also puts the line at risk of snapping. Sometimes the fish will be too large for the gear and require stronger tackle, and you will run into that a lot as you are leveling up. But eventually you will get the best tackle in the game, the best gear, and uh, that's when it becomes really, really fun. So now they want us to go greet the warden. The warden Warden of Golden Ridge Reserve works to protect the environment in the park. He asks visitors to keep an eye open for invasive plant species, deceased trees, and malfunctioning equipment, among other things. If you see one of those objects, you can interact with it to let the warden know, and this will actually give you XP. Okay, we have met the warden. Now we're going to take a mission from the challenge board. So once you've unlocked all of your outposts, you want to go to all of the boards. This is how you pick up missions. So it says here the challenge board holds different types of challenges and other calls to action. There is a challenge board at every outpost in the reserve. As you complete challenges, more will unlock. There are three different types of challenges. Each one involves finding a location and catching a specific fish. The board also has two unique missions. The Golden Tour leads you around to key locations in the reserve, while Taylor's Tackle Academy teaches the fish mechanics in detail. These missions are recommended for new players. Okay, enroll in Taylor's Tackle Academy. In this series of missions, you will be taught the basics of the game. There are four classes, each involving a series of objectives followed by a challenge. Recommended for beginners, you are able to follow these classes for extra info in between your own exploration and fishing. The class will cover float fishing, baits, and hook depth. The lesson will continue 
continue when you reach the marked location. And we're already leveled up to level two. And we are able to now join multiplayer. Very sweet. So we did complete the beginning missions. So it says you've joined multiplayer for the first time. By default, you will automatically connect to a server and join people from all over the world. To turn this off, disable this in Apex Connect options accessed from the main menu. So if you'd like to invite a friend to your map or join a friend's map, just press escape. Go in here to Apex Connect. Your friends list will be right in here. So say I wanted to join Elio's map, I would just right click and join her game. And if I wanted to invite someone, you would just add a friend and then they can go in and join your game. Float fishing uses a float, a hook, and some bait. Once the bait is in the water, the float remains on the surface and acts as an indicator if the fish is nibbling or biting. If nothing bites after a few minutes, you can try reeling in and casting in a different location. So you don't want to wait forever. If it doesn't work after a little while, definitely change your tactic and try again. So it says press Q to open the quick menu, select the bait category, and switch to a blood worm. Blood worm, done. So now we need to catch a fish using a blood worm. We have a green sunfish, score 396, and it will tell you new best rank, sweet. The hook depth is a measure of the distance between the float and hook. It can be changed before casting using the scrolling wheel. A lower hook depth allows bait to reach slightly deeper areas of the water, luring out fish that are swimming deeper or hiding out in nooks and crannies. So it's telling us to change our hook depth so there we go. Set the hook depth with three out of three. Higher, telling us to go higher. Okay, completed. Now we need to catch another fish. Now you'll notice it said secure catch along the bottom. When you see that, you wanna hold the space bar down if you are on PC and that will just catch the fish and bring it in. And we have a yellow perch. All right, next class. Well done, you've learned about float fishing baits and hook depth. The next class covers hook sizes and building your own rig. It will be available upon completion of a challenge. So we completed beginner class one. Now we're doing beginner challenge one and now we have to catch five fish so go ahead and do that and then we will continue on okay so this will be our fifth fish a yellow perch and that completes that part of the mission and now it wants us to go back to the challenge board so every time it wants you to go somewhere you just follow the yellow diamond now before we continue i want to show you something in the settings so if you actually go to escape and go into options go to accessibility if you turn on accessible cast it will allow you to just press the left mouse button and do a nice Nice long cast and if you turn the reeling input type to toggle then as you are reeling you can just click on the left mouse to reel and you don't have to hold the mouse button down so those are two changes i would highly recommend making in accessibility and then you can just press escape with accessibility it also allows you to change the length of your cast okay so we're going to start the bronze fishing challenge so we want to pull these missions off the board and it will bring you in here to your journal so in order to enable a mission you want to press enter it will show you that we now have a triangle on the top left that means that mission is activated now one thing you want to make sure that you're doing all the time is enabling the weekly and daily challenges so just press m go to challenges we are under daily challenges so you want to go in here every day and re-enable this and basically you can choose which three challenges you want to do i would pick the ones with the most xp and then you can just press ok and it will move it over click on it and enter it that will activate it and those are our three daily missions for today and and basically that's just free money while you're fishing. If you're out fishing all kinds of different species, make sure you are targeting orid trout and brook trout that day. Then for the weekly challenges, you also have three different challenges that you can complete throughout the entire week, giving you more sweet XP. So just ensure those are enabled and that will definitely help you with leveling up. So now we wanna go to the diamond and you can track it just click on it and press track and we're gonna run out there. So from there, I would recommend just continually pulling the missions off the board and completing the missions and it will definitely help you level up. Pair that with running around and unlocking your map. Just doing that will help you to level up and every time you level up, it's going to unlock more gear in the store. Let's actually go in the store and have a good look at that. You can always fast travel to the outpost. Now, if you do see like a sparkling bush, I don't see one right now, definitely run right up to it and discover it and that will give you XP. Okay, so we're at the shop. Let's click buy. You can go in here, you can buy. You can actually sell things that you're not using anymore. And you can move things around from storage because when you have a lot of gear, you can't always carry it all on you. And it's showing you right down here. This is how many coins so far that I have. And it keeps track of golds, diamonds, and legendaries. And golds in this game are 
not easy. It's not like the hunter call the wild. They are definitely a really good find. Not that easy. So we have in the store here all these categories for everything that you can purchase. So we have spinning rods, bait casting rods, and match rods. Now the one in the top right hand corner will tell you that you do own one of those and it will tell you at what level all of these will unlock. So as you can see by leveling up you're going to unlock better and better gear. Now when you purchase a rod you need to purchase line that is going to match the max line strength of that rod. So this rod has a max line strength of 4.41 pounds. So when we go over here to line, this is the line that would match that rod. So let's buy it. Okay, so with the monofilament, this is the weakest type of line. Fluorocarbon is kind of the middle ground and the heaviest duty line is the braided. When you're going for a legendary, you definitely want braided line. Then in here, we have many different types of lures. There are spinner baits, spinners, poppers, frogs, spoons, swim bait, jerk bait, and crank bait. Now, if you press M and you go into handbook, this will show you all 21 species of fish that are on this map. And when you click on it, it will actually tell you everything you need to know to catch that fish. So right here, it just tells you the habitats and the bait and lure preferences. But if you actually press tab, it will go into more detail. And I believe it goes from the best to worst as far as the bait and lure preferences go. But anything in here will work for catching that fish. So this is very good information. This will definitely help you. So if you press F for focus, it will show you their traits as well, which is very cool. We're on largemouth bass. They are aggressive. They are a jumper. Last stand. When close to getting caught, it fights with renewed vigor and it is a sun lover. You can also have a look at the legendary fish that can be found on this map. Latest catches, your coins. I haven't got any figures. Oh, and your collectibles will show up in here. I haven't got any so far. And then these are our live baits. The most you can have is 99. So that is what you're going to place when you are float fishing and there are live baits in there. So level 10 is really where you want to get. It unlocks a lot of your live baits and the natural baits all unlock at level eight. Now with the float fishing, these floats don't really matter as far as performance goes. This one is very cool when you can unlock it because it glows. So that is great for night fishing. And in this game, you cannot change the time. So whatever time it is on the map, you just have to deal with it or change servers. So as far as lures go, we have regular hooks and we do have jig heads. Now you'll notice there is a weight at the top of the jig head and with the jig heads you use soft plastics to attract as opposed to different live and natural baits and that just works well for different types of fish. So there are lots and lots of different ways to catch fish in here. So if you're not sure what to use, basically press M, go into your handbook, look up whatever fish it is you'd like to catch and it will tell you different things that will work for catching, for example, a black crappie. So minnows, that's for float fishing, grub, tube, bloodworm, marshmallow, and redworm. And then the spoon and crankbait lures will work really well with them as well. So certain species of fish you can only catch during the day, certain species you can only catch at night, and then there are fish that you can catch at any time of day. For example, catfish, you can catch them during the day, but not nearly as much. They are really, really active at night. So that is your best time to fish for catfish. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you is this map has been really well thought out by EW as far as the waypoint system goes. So you'll notice I have all these blue fish and yellow fish markings on the map. Every time I see someone catch a diamond of a particular fish species, I will go and I will mark where that is on the map so that I know where the best spots are because I can't possibly remember five amazing spots for 21 different species of fish. It just gets to be a lot of information. Okay, so for example, I just saw a friend get a diamond tiger muskie in this spot right down here. So what we wanna do is click there, add a marker. So that's legendary, that's diamond, that's gold, Gold, that's silver. Technically that's brown, but I've just been using it as a hot spot. Whatever works for you, but it was a diamond. So that marks it as a diamond, but we want to actually put the type of fish so we can set a label. And that was for tiger muskie. So now I know that's a hot spot next time I come to fish, whereas I might've forgotten before. So definitely use that to your advantage. I would love to see something like this added to the hunter call of the wild, but awesome job EW. So basically when you are getting started in the angler, what 
what you want to do is first and foremost do as many missions as you possibly can you want to unlock your map that is going to level you up and give you way more opportunity you want to be able to fish anywhere on the map now it will take some time but it is definitely something you want to do right at the beginning and fish as much as you possibly can you want to level up your gear and you can catch diamonds right from the beginning but the better your gear is the more diamonds you're going to have the ability to catch the smaller fish varieties you can go for right at the beginning and that is basically how the game works so I really hope that does help you guys out if you do have questions leave them in the comments below if you did enjoy the video hit that like button and we will definitely see you guys in the next one click here to see me catch my first and second legendary fish in less than 30 minutes